our final guest is the Swedish actress made famous across the world after appearing in hit films, including The Wicker Man, and as Bond girl Mary Goodnight in The Man with the Golden Gun. But it wasn't just her acting ability that got her noticed as a Bond girl, also that iconic image of her in a bikini, which James Bond seemed to appreciate himself. Please welcome Britt Eklund. <laughs> Don't. Of course I do. You've got the same proportions now same as you figure. did as, as as you did back then in that bikini. Really? Mm. I think you might be my new inspiration. Oh. <laughs> you could do worse. I could do worse. Did you I... get to choose which bikini you got to wear? Or then? No. And on all the posters over the years, it's been green and blue <coughs> and black and yellow, but it was actually blue. Oh, now, Roger Moore, he had a real twinkle in his eye, didn't he? Was there yeah. chemistry with you two? Yes, because he was a very jokey. He wasn't sort of sexually threatening. You know, sometimes mm. leading men can be like... Who <laughs> <laughs> was the most like that that you've ever worked with, the, uh, that noise you did? <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever worked with a man that was that way, but Sean Connery would definitely be that kind of sexually threatening man. Yeah. 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 Would you have had the same confidence strutting around in a bikini in front of Roger Moore uh, as, uh, as with Sean Connery as you were with Roger Moore? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Listen, Why not? You looked really hot. Listen, I was thin. Well, you still are thin. You still are. No, but I mean, you know, when you do it for the movies, you've got to be doubly thin. How did you get that job? You, you actually went for it and you were not going to I, I did. Yeah. I did. I'd read the book and I dressed up as... Uh, Mary Goodnight, the way I thought a uh, secretary dress, with a little bun in the back, and little, you know, those ducks hound heels, we call them kitten heels, mm. yeah. and a skirt and a blouse. And okay. I went in and said, I want to see uh, Broccoli himself, and he said, well, you know, we only use a little bit of the book, and then, and he said, oh, by the way, here's Roger Moore. So I said, hello, Roger Moore, and that was it. And then I, I went to America to do a film, and on the flight back, six weeks later, I read in the paper that they've engaged a Swedish girl called Maud Adams. And I was gutted. Gutted. So what How did you, did you get rid of her then? No, she was... <laughs> <laughs> she became my very best friend. And she was um, uh, Christopher, Christopher Lee's girlfriend right. in the movie. So that's how that happened. Now, last time we saw you, I think it was about a year ago, and you yeah, were doing exactly, an audience yeah. with, weren't you? That's correct. Great. Yes. Are you planning to do more of that? Because I know you quite enjoyed it, didn't you? And it was a big success. It won't be called an audience with. It will be called something else, and it will be not as structured. It will basically... It's my one-woman show. It will just be me sitting on a chair, talking like I do to you now, and then the odd photos shown behind. Because it was a little too structured. I wasn't... You know when you're not confident yeah. in something. So um, I'm working on that this minute. Oh, good. And, and do you, are you, is it a fair game as far as your life is concerned? Are you quite happy to put everything up for public consumption in the context of that show? Well, if you can find something about me that hasn't been out there. <laughs> <laughs> and how yeah, are you yeah. with, with dating ugly men? Do you, do you subscribe to that? Do you think that... Um... <laughs> Dating ugly men. Yeah, well, it, because if beautiful people date people less good-looking than themselves, it makes them feel better. There's, there's two yeah. arguments. It makes them feel better. I there's never a had sense that of gratitude, problem. and apparently, <laughs> less good-looking people work harder in certain areas. No, I never had that. You know, I and I never looked at it like that. I fell in love with you. I, I lived with you in some cases. I married you in other cases. Uh, <laughs> We didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but my attitude was just, you know, I fell in love. I never looked, I never, I have mm. never married for love. I mean, I've never married for love. <laughs> <laughs> anything other than love. <laughs> I've, I've never married for money. I've only ever married for love. Do you and, think that... And then look where it got me. Do you think that you, some of your relationships might have been down to the way you looked? Because you were a bit of a stunner, weren't you? Who, you are, still we, are. who are we alluding no, to? No, nobody would, would in make particular. Them insecure, but... Wouldn't it? Would they give you grief if they were insecure about you? They could well give you grief. Peter Sellers was he uh, Peter Sellers was probably insecure, but um, but then he he was you know a manic depressive anyway. 
um, as diagnosed by me today. Okay. Can I just ask you, Reed, as well? I think that I, I, I read somewhere you were quoted because we were talking about who's a good hostess. Carol and I are not very good in the conventional way, and the girls are. But you said that. What did you say? That guests are lovely on the first day, so so on the second day, and by the third day they smell of dead fish. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they? What? Because after three days you've run. Oh, I mean, unless it's my best friend, you know. But if you're having a couple staying, uh, or more than more than two people, then you've got to find something to talk to you about, something to talk to you two about. Well, why does uh, that make them smell of fish? Well, because after three days they've eaten all the best food, you, they <laughs> drank all your best champagne, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you've driven them round to see, uh, you know, what, let's talk about my house in Sweden, whatever there is to see in Stockholm, or you know, and, and that's it. I can't do anything more for them. But I had two girlfriends come to Stockholm, <laughs> staying with me. I love them. They're my best girlfriends. But I couldn't be bothered to drive them around, so I just hired a taxi and I said, take them around and, <laughs> and show them Stockholm. <laughs> you know, that's a great idea. But the guy spoke English, and so what? I mean, Good idea. It, it cost me 30 quid. And you got them out there? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Then we met up for our drink later. Do you like a drink? Of course I do. Do you, do you write down what you're... Do you worry about how much you drink? You haven't got a drink diary? Don't you think I have other things to worry about? Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. No, I know. I was... No, the thing is this. I, I, I look at everything very simply. If I want to do something, I do it. There's a price to pay the next day. Yeah. Well, listen, you look and, good on it. And though. that's what I do. Thank you so much for coming by again. It's My been pleasure. It's everyone. Woo!